it was not what I wanted at all. Like I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be so bad. And like, basically I can't remember the specifics of it, but it was a lot of like, touch my body and this and this and this. And I, I just went, I don't know if that's like the Tyler Breeze character at all. Thank you for inviting me to Flatbacks. Of course, of course. You got a good intro, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's just, hey, and here we go, and well, away we go, and there we go. And the reason I do that is because if I was like, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining, like I was like a ring announcer yeah, or something, yeah. yeah, it just feels too formal. I get it, I get it, make it real. Yeah, make it like an actual conversation. That's right. You have a great wrestling school here. So yeah, I, uh, it's kind of come together over the past like six months. Mm. Um you know, as you can see, the the office where we just kind of put all of our uh, stuff on the wall, um, and then uh, and then the actual you know ring and where everything gets done. Well, a lot of wrestling schools don't even have an office. They don't. Yeah, we have two. <laughs> oh, we have one that's empty. We don't even know what to do with it. Most of the time, I just put my dogs in there. And if you look around here, it's like, <laughs> have these guys done anything? Because it's <laughs> yeah. also Sean Spears. Uh, well, well, that so you got to think too, uh, which I, I explained this to to uh, Ronnie as we were coming in here. Like that's Sean when, Spears, by the way. Yes. So. Uh, when I came to Lance's at, at uh, SWA Storm Wrestling, I walked in and the very first like little office spot it had like a picture of him with Sting in a in a half crab. Wow! And I just went like, whoa! <laughs> like I'm here learning from that guy. Yeah. And so I was like, dude, that first like that the room's got to be like, whoa! Like, oh my god, hey, there's some NXT stuff. Hey, there's like you know a bunch of like professional looking things. Hey, there's some yeah. action figures. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. this is like one of those things where you you, you kind of have to brag a little bit about yourself so uh it's kind of cool i was like yeah let's plaster this place well this is like a resume yes splattered all over the walls here if you're if you're wondering if we're you know okay at doing this uh (laughs) just look on the wall well and that's the thing i think that some people want to get trained and unfortunately they go to schools where you know the people haven't been there no and that's we tell a lot of people that um because a lot of people are impatient and so we have like a very like unless you're uh so 18 is is the the minimum age um just because you have to kind of mature to realize you know wrestling is dangerous as fun as it is yeah. wrestling can be very dangerous it hurts so people who are you know 14 15 16 they're like hey i want to come wrestle and, and we're like look man uh, we, we're not going to do that yet because first off, wrestling is really hard on your body, but yeah. also you need to, like I said, you have to realize that you know if I'm relying on you and you're relying on me, we have to be at a certain spot in our life to do that. And uh, people are like, "Wow, there's this other school down the street that I could go to," and I was like, "Yeah, but I promise you, like you know, Joe Savage or whoever's going to train you is probably not good." Yeah. So then you come here and we have to undo a lot of you know we we get those emails all the time of oh, I've already been trained and I've been working and everything else. Well, I promise you, come in here, and within five minutes, I'll say, yeah, we need to teach you like the whole thing and undo all these bad oh, wow. habits just because that's how it is. So you trained with Lance Storm. I yes. mean, it doesn't really get any better than that. No, he gave me, you know, obviously the best start that, that anyone could ask for. I was I was fresh, you know, uh, straight from scratch there. So he, uh, he kind of started me off better than anybody could. And you guys are doing a similar-ish program, and I mean that in like you come here and it's five days a week. Like this is your job. Yeah, this, it, the, so the structure is very much the same. Same, um, where his structure was a little bit longer. So he did three month courses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do eight weeks okay. um, just because obviously there is two of us here. So we can do a little bit faster and everything else. Um, but the way he does it, the start to finish approach is very, very good as opposed to, and actually this is kind of cool too, where I trained with Lance and I did the start to finish approach Okay. where by the time you leave here, you got everything you need to, to start working and go towards your goal. Um, Ronnie did it very differently where he did a drop in school. And so yeah. you could drop in and you have no clue where you're starting at or where you're finishing at. And you can find yourself training for six six months to a year yeah. and still not fully cover everything because that's just how it goes depending on what day you go there and that's how a lot of the schools work yes a lot of them are like okay we're tuesdays thursdays and every other sunday mm-hmm. and you're right if, if you could be so much further behind yeah. even though you've had six months of training yes we've had people who who came here and they're like oh i've you know i trained before and everything else and you know, by the time we get to like I don't know week six or seven, and we're doing some backdrops or something, right? And they're going, "Oh man!" Like the first time I learned these, like the guy was just like, "Hey, I'm gonna send you off the ropes, and I'm gonna throw you in the air." And I was like, "Yeah, like like that's dang- that's danger. That's not that that shouldn't be how it's done." Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, it is, and that's mm. why you know if you're going to pursue this as a career, please do your research and and please be safe because you only have one body, and you're you know you got to be healthy and you got to be safe on this stuff. And that's our main thing is just like you have to do this safely if you want a twenty. Your, yeah. you know, career. How do you balance this with being on the road with WWE? 
So it actually works out pretty pretty good um, because between the both of us, we have like the perfect schedule. So we're both here normally for like Mondays and Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wednesdays will actually take off because I have NXT and he has AEW, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, and then Thursday, Friday, we're both here. Now that I've started doing some 205 stuff, uh, I'm, I'm usually gone for Friday, but... Luckily, he's here and he covers it, so right. we're good. And then, and you know, if we we kind of have days in there where we can make some stuff up if we need to, but for the most part, everybody like picks it up and we've hit our groove on like certain things and just we've had a couple classes, so it's you know, oh, this actually worked better here, and we we adjust some things here and there, um, but it actually works like wow, perfect. Yeah. So when did you guys start deciding like you know what we should open a wrestling school? Well, so uh, actually back in May. Um, I was kind of going through a rough time and I just, I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. Like, uh, I think I was still, I was, I was up on the, on raw or SmackDown or whatever. And, uh, Dango was hurt. So he'd been hurt. I think at that point for, uh, probably over a year. I like to call him Dango. Dango. I, I can't bring myself <laughs> to call him Fandango. It's Fandango. I can't do it. I can't, I, I'll never do it. Uh, so Dango, <laughs> as I always call him, uh, he was hurt. So he was out for, I think over a year. And wow. I was like super disheartened because what we were doing, like, you know, and this kind of goes back like even more where like we were doing the fashion files, right? And everything was kind of catching and like we were hitting a groove and like we were in this thing mm. and it just never got to that point where like they fully pulled the trigger on it. And I was like, oh man, like we missed the boat on this thing. And this was like the most that we've ever done, like to get somewhere was here. And the stuff we did with Usos and all this other stuff was just awesome. Yeah. And it just never got to the point where we fully got, you know, that that time and so then dango ended up getting hurt and i just went like okay like what am i doing for the next year kind of thing because his right. shoulder was his shoulder was destroyed and um so i just said okay like uh, uh you know i'll kind of go forward and do whatever they want me to do six months goes by and another six months go by and i just started getting really really down and i was like i'm not enjoying this like i'm not enjoying wrestling yeah. like i was talking to my friends and i was like i don't think i want to wrestle anymore like i don't i just i don't think i want to and I had a conversation where I basically said, like, hey, if you guys don't need me, like, I'm good to go. Like, I'm, I'm, I am I'm, just don't need to be here. And it kind of got turned into, like, okay, well, we, you know, we don't really want to see you go. So, like, let's make this work. Um, and that was when I kind of made the transition down to NXT. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, like, started to reinvigorate me a little bit. And, and um, I ended up going to a couple schools around Orlando just to kind of, like, you know, try, try to get the juices flowing again because I was just really disheartened. And uh, I started to realize that wrestling's not the problem. Like, wrestling's awesome. <laughs> it's just when you're in a certain spot, like, when you when you get yourself into a certain mindset, it's hard to kick out of that. Yeah. And I just was in that mindset, and I was just getting negative and bitter, and, and, and I finally realized that wrestling's not the problem. And I, I talked to Ronnie, and I said, look, man, like, I've wanted to train people forever. I, I love training people. Like, there's been a bunch of people, like, even going through NXT, um, I used to work with, like, Charlotte and Becky and Bailey and Sasha and, like, everybody along the way, um, you know, like, uh, Alexa Bliss and, and just everybody um, and just kind of, like, work with them on little things. And, yeah. I, and I loved seeing them get it and then, like, they'd do it in the ring and I'd be, like, at the curtain, like, mm, like, yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I just went, like, eventually I'm going to train people. And I just kind of went like, whenever the time's right, because on the road, obviously, it's very, very hard to kind of make it all work. Yeah. I can't do it myself because, you know, it's a lot of work as I'm still working with WWE. And um, so I just went like, you know what? Between my schedule and your schedule, we can make this work. And I think now's the time to do it. And I feel like I need it. Like, I feel like to get me back to where I need to be, I need to teach people. And so he just kind of went, okay. Like, you know, and like I said, he was trained very differently to where I just said, just trust me on this. We can make this work. And like I said, we kind of, this fell in place where we found the building and yeah. then all of a sudden we ordered everything we needed. And then all of a sudden we started like, we made a website and then all of a sudden applications came in and we were like, this is happening. Like, yeah. <laughs> and we were fully prepared. I was like the first six months, we might not have anybody want to train with us cause they don't know. But like right away we had like four or five people and I was like, this is awesome. Like cool. So we started training people and like he got into it and I got into it. And all of a sudden I went, this is going to be really good. And like now, um, like I said, I think within six months, because we started June, June or July, uh, and now it's January, and we yeah. got our first class, and it's full. And so I was like, man, Congrats. we got like a full class. Yeah. Uh, March is already filling up. May is already filling up. Like this whole year is filling up. So I was like, this is like this is working good. And um, like I said, just watching people kind of get it. Like once they like once it clicks, yeah. you're like, you're gonna be really good. And like I'm just waiting for it. You know what yeah. I mean? And like Ronnie yeah. was had been released at that time, right? So he was yes. he was an indie guy. Yes. And that's, and so I was talking to him too. I said around like, cause you know, we're based in Orlando and I said around Orlando, there's some schools, mm-hmm. but nobody between me and him, nobody has first off the credentials that we do. Sure. And also right now relevant, like in the wrestling world, we've got the whole thing covered. 
You know what I mean? Like he's over here, I'm over here, yeah. and we've got everything covered. So yeah. I said, this is like, and, and if you don't, you know, if you don't believe us, like watch every Wednesday, you'll see both of us. You know what I mean? So like, this is the time to pull the trigger on this thing. Yeah. And you know, like I said, we did, and it's it's awesome. And I, I guess this is your tenth year under WWE contract. Yes, uh, August. It was like June, some somewhere between June and August of 2010 is when I signed. Wow. So this summer yeah. is 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, man. Flies by. I guess so. I was actually, so Lance is, uh, he's on the road now as an agent. Yeah. And I ran into him and like, we just started laughing and I just went, man, what a weird, like what a weird, crazy world. So also about like opening the school, right? Yeah. We open the school and he shuts his school down. <laughs> like, what are the odds of that? Like just in terms of like, you know, a full circle type yeah. of thing. And I just went, whoa. I said, I said, why are you shutting your school down? And he said, I've been training for 15 years. And I went, whoa, I've been wrestling for 13 years. Yeah. Like, oh my God, you, you don't even notice it. And so it just goes by so quick and like. Yeah, you posted that photo on Instagram yeah. of you and Lance. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's it's, great. It's very, very like, it's almost unsettling in a way to where I went, <laughs> whoa, how have I been wrestling for 13 years? And how have I been in WWE for 10 years? Not everyone will you know, necessarily know this, but Lance is now working as a producer. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it. If you guys don't know, like if people don't know about Lance, he like obviously he he knows how to train people, but he yeah, also the he, best. <laughs> he gets it. He knows exactly how to make this translate to an audience, which is the whole point of what we do. Right. And so now that he's finally a part of doing all that stuff, it's it's huge. Wow. So what did you guys talk about? You probably hadn't seen each other in a long time. <sighs> I think I saw him at maybe like a live event in Calgary or something like four or five years ago. Yeah. Um, and aside from that, I think he came to like the performance center or something a couple times as just like a guest trainer. Um, but he was just, yeah, he was busy with the school. Right. So, uh, I finally saw him and actually the, <laughs> the first thing, of course, the first thing he does is I go, I go, Hey, I see him in catering and I go, Hey, and he's, he's wearing, um, he's got under armor, under armor pants, like under armor track pants. And then like a, like WWE polo. And I, I just looked at him. I said, is that dress code? <laughs> and, he, and he just goes, ah, oh, come here, you skinny bastard. <laughs> And, and, you know, we just kind of hugged and whatever and, like, just sat there and talked a You're bit. wearing Under Armour right now. I, I am. Rocking the, I am. the rock. Yeah. Well, it's very comfortable. I really like these sleeveless hoodies. Yeah, this, this seems like something Tyler Breeze might wear. Well, well especially when I'm training. Yeah. Especially when I'm training. Yeah, I got to show off the guns. Well, you know, I, I don't say it, but it translates. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so, you know, if you've been in WWE for 10 years and training for 13, that or wrestling for 13, yeah. that's pretty crazy that WWE had their eye on you that early in your career. Well, so it's more of a, I guess, it was more on me which is kind of the whole wrestling thing in general you can't expect i mean which you know obviously you've been around wrestling a lot you can't expect people to just you know reach out and be like hey we need you yeah because guess what they don't really need any of us um but you have to be proactive in this stuff so when i finished training with lance um i kind of started like wrestling around nothing that anyone would have ever heard of so like with three years i think it was three or four years yeah probably three um, that I was on the, you know, the independence that you just in call Canada, them. just in Canada. Okay. So I think I went to California for like a month and that was like it. Um, but so I was kind of like traveling around. I was doing these like Indian reserve shows where basically like the Indian reserve would pay however much, I don't know what it was, like a couple thousand dollars. Or yes. Whatever. And this guy would yeah. bring in six people in a ring and we would have three singles matches and a six man tag. And that was our show. So we'd set up the ring and it was like a horrible ring. We'd set up the ring, we'd do our show, we'd tear it down, and we would drive across Canada. So he, And he booked it so bad, too. He, like, we would start, we were all based in Calgary. Yeah. We would drive to, like, Winnipeg and do a show in Winnipeg. Then we'd drive to somewhere in Ontario, do a show in Ontario. Back to Alberta That's to do a show. That's a long drive, yes. by the way. Yes. And it was literally, like, Alberta to Ontario to Winnipeg. All of it, like, could not be booked worse. But we'd do, like, three or four shows in a row, um, and then we'd end up, you know, driving back. And that was almost the extent of my independent career. Like I did those shows and yeah. then I did uh, a couple shows, like maybe two shows a month for like um, PWA, which was a, a promotion in, um, they ran Edmonton and Calgary. And, okay. then, and there was a PZW was another one that popped up, which was in Lethbridge. So luck, if I was lucky, I had three shows a month. Um, but I kind of did that for a couple of years and I went, this is all kind of the same stuff. You know what I mean? So like, what should I, what should I do here? And so I asked Lance, I said like, what do you think? Like, should I go to a tryout and just kind of see where I'm at? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, why not? So he ended up talking to Norman Smiley, who was down at FCW at the time. And he said, yeah, send him down. We'll have a look. Wow. So I went down, I did like a three day camp or something where I paid my own way. I paid my own way there. I paid for the camp. I think the camp was, you know, like 1500 bucks or something. Wow. And it was like, I think the first one was like 60 people. And you went there and they kind of put you through a boot camp and I just gauged where I was. 
the good part was that as soon as we started, like I'd look around and obviously I'm not the biggest guy or whatever. And I look around and there's like these, some monstrous guys and everything else. And I just went like, oh my God, I, I'm, there's no way I'm getting hired here. And within five minutes I went, I'm better than all these guys. These guys can't move. These guys can't do this. These guys aren't trained properly. And like yeah. you rule out over half of them. The very first one. So I, I, I made sure that I talked to like Steve Kern and Dr. Tom and all the people who were there. Cause that's, you know, half of wrestling is the connections. It's who you know. Yeah. And I ended up talking to him. Um, and they said, yeah, you know, you're doing really good and everything else. I said, cool. Uh, Jinder Mahal ended up getting signed out of that one. Oh, wow. So, so he was at the first a fellow one Canadian. Me. Yes. Yeah. So he ended up getting signed at that one. Huh? Uh, I think like maybe six weeks went by and they had another one. And I just said like, Hey Lance, like, is it too soon? Like, should I go again? And he goes, he goes, let me, let me double check. So he asked uh, Norman again. And he said, what do you think? Like, should he come down? And he said, yes, please send him down. So I went down this time and, um, same thing. I, I, the first day, this was 80 people and I wow. looked around and I went, Oh my God, like there's no way. So I ended up doing the tryout. Uh, same thing within five, 10 minutes. I went, yeah, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone. Um, I remember specifically, there was actually a lot of people in that one. There was like, uh, who do I specifically remember? Robbie E, Joey Ryan, Michael Elgin, um, who was Tony Nice. Wow. There was a bunch of people. So yeah. tons and tons of people at this one. Um, I ended up talking to Steve Kern, Dr. Tom, all the same guys. And they just said like, Hey, just so you know, like, yeah, you're in like our top five right now. And I said, okay, cool. This was like, I just, just touch and base. Everything's cool. Uh, edge. And this is what, this is also why I hold edge like super high. He ended up coming to the tryout. He, uh, he came down and I was like, Oh my God, like, you know, I've never met anybody like, you know, I've never met like he's currently, I think he was on, he was on TV at that point, like 2010. Oh, for sure. And, yeah, um, yeah. so, so we had some guests come in and everything else and he comes in and I go like, Oh man, this is cool. And so I know that him and Lance are friends. So I go up to him and I said, Hey man, you know, how's it going? Whatever. I train with Lance. And he said, Oh, Lance told me about your stuff. And I said, <laughs> I said, did you see my match? And he goes, he goes, no, but I went back and I watched it. And he goes, he goes, wow. he goes, he was really good. Like, yeah, and he gave me like all this cr critique and feedback. And I went, you know what, man? Like he didn't have to do any of this. He didn't, yeah. have to, he didn't have to talk to me. I don't know him. I've never met him, but he went out of his way to go back, rewind the tape, watch my match, give me critique, give wow, me feedback. On yeah. It. And I went, that's like, that's Canadian, man. That's <laughs> Canadian. Yeah. Um, and but so he also saw something in you. Yes. And so I ended up talking to him and I went, I went, awesome, man. This is awesome. So uh, they ended up doing, they, at the end of the tryout, they would give away one contract. And so I watched last time as Jinder Mahal got it. I'm sitting there and they're standing up front. Everybody's standing there. And um, they go, all right, you know, hey, we're, we're giving one contract away. They kind of do the speech. And I'm sitting there going like, all right, next time I'll do, you know, this was good. Next time I do whatever. And they said, uh, you know, we're going to give the, the contract to Matt Clement. And I'm sitting there and I went, oh God. I said, did they say Matt Clement? <laughs> You're like, that's me. And, and they're looking at me and I went, oh my God, I, I just got hired. So I stand up and I go to the front and like, I don't even, it's just like a blur, obviously. It's like, sure. you know, everybody's standing there. I think it was like Billy Kidman, Norman, Dusty, like everybody's standing there and I go up and shake other hands and we take a picture and everything else. And I just went, whoa, like this is happening. And so I, I called my mom and stuff. I was like, yeah, they hired me. Like, I think it went pretty good. They hired me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I ended up talking to Steve Kern. Funny story about it. I ended up talking to Steve Kern about it, who I said, uh, I said, not complaining, but I said, why'd you guys hire me? Like, I'm just curious. And he said, honestly, he goes, it came down to you and Tony Nice. And I went, oh my God, Tony Nice is like, yeah, he looked identical to how he does now. Super jacked, super agile, like can do anything. Awesome guy. And uh, I just said, all right, like, so why did you hire me then? And they just said, look, man, we, like we didn't talk to him at all. Like we didn't talk to him at all this entire time. Like he just kind of blended in. Huh. And I went, Whoa. So because I went out of my way to not yeah. only talk to like Edge, who was in the he was in the meeting, but talk to Edge, talk to Steve, talk to Doc, talk to Kidman, talk to Norman, because they knew who yeah. I was and then they saw this and they saw that it came back again and improved and everything else, that was what got me hired. And there's such a lesson to be learned here. Like it doesn't just have to be wrestling, but whatever mm -hmm. you want to do in life, yeah. do whatever you can to stand out. Of course. And not and not just, you know, you have to be talented, obviously, to do what we do. Sure. But you have to make those connections with people, which mm -hmm. is kind of funny because that's exactly what we do in the ring. You have to make a connection with people yeah. if you want to do this and make money and be successful at it so did you then pick up and move to florida right away so i had to get my visa obviously because yes i, I know yes. so i think an o1 visa uh p1 oh a p1, p1. oh i don't Very even know what special that is one. p1 p1's right below an o1 okay um so, i was an o1 visa holder that's o why i say that so o1's really hard to get so is p1 well they're all hard to they're get. They're all very hard. Yeah. So uh, I want to say, I got to double check on that, but I want to say the trial was like in May uh -huh. and I think it, was, it wasn't it was until like August that I actually made it down. No, 
August, I got hired okay. and I didn't make it down until a day before. I remember this because of a funny story I'll tell you. So I came down a day before Thanksgiving, whenever. Canadian or American U- Thanksgiving? U.S. Thanksgiving, okay. which is what, November? The fourth Thursday in November. So I came down on the day before Thanksgiving and I remember this specifically because of uh, Hunico, who was Sin Cara. Yeah. Him and uh, Epico, uh, <laughs> they are, if you don't know them, they're the, like, the biggest jokesters of all time. But they're sitting there, and Doc brings me up, and he goes, "Hey guys, you know, uh, you know, here's Matt. He's joining us, whatever." And of course, they just go, "Oh, are you? Uh, he's from Canada, or whatever." And they say, "Are you gonna go home for the holidays?" <laughs> Clearly, I'm not, because it's it's tomorrow. And they just go, <laughs> and they're snickering to themselves. And I go, uh, "Of course, I'm like nervous. I'm just like, no, no, I'm gonna stay down here." And like, they don't care. They're just messing with me. Um, which you know, I end up being friends with both of them. But I remember it specifically because, of course, they had to mess with me on my first day. <laughs> Yeah. So you've been living in Florida ever since? Been in Florida ever since, yeah. I was in Tampa as long as FCW was there. Right. Once it made the transition to NXT, I moved yeah. to Orlando and then been here ever since. Wow. And I, you, you mentioned earlier that you know you were kind of in a rut with mm-hmm. your career. And there was a point where you were basically asking if you could be sent down to NXT. Yeah. What was the reaction when you were publicly putting that out there? Um, I mean, it wasn't like a... It wasn't a the thing is, is like the public or social media or whatever likes to make this big hurrah out of everything. It's not like that. Like, and that's, it's not only like in my professional life, but in my personal life, like I was going through a lot of things. Like I wasn't in a very good place, uh, in, in May. And it, that's just kind of when it all came to a head. And I kind of dropped a bomb on everything where I just kind of said like, I got to change my life because mm-hmm. I am not happy. You know what I mean? And, and nobody can change it, but you kind of thing. So I said, all right, I got to change my job. I got to change my life. I got to change everything that's going on. Sure. And uh, I just kind of said, look, like I, I, and it didn't even start as like a, hey, send me back to NXT. I'm not happy, whatever. It wasn't that at all. It was just like, look, I'm, I haven't been doing anything. I'm not enjoying what I'm doing. Dango, I, I, at that point, Dango had no sign of coming back anytime soon. And I just said like, if you don't need me, like I can go and kind of do something else. And, and either one, prove that you do need me or that you want me. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, I'll go find something else to do because I'm just not enjoying what I'm doing. And um, I was specifically told, like, we'd rather put you in NXT than let you go. And I said, okay, cool. That's great. I said, that's great. Like, yeah. that's because I don't want to leave. I don't want, like, you know, it, it's obviously WWE. I've been here for 10 years. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like the only job you've ever known, really. Yes. yes. Well, I've done a bunch of jobs. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, the whole point is it's not, you know, like, because it, it has been, there's been a, a, a pattern or whatever of, of people being like, you know, ah, I, I, I want to do whatever. And they cause this big uproar. It's not that at all. Um, I just had to be, I had to get myself to a good place. I had to, I had to become happy again because I just wasn't. But you were still being flown in for the shows and just not being booked on them? Uh, or like main event or, or superstars or whatever it was. Um, and I was booked. I, I, I'd work dark matches or main event. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was okay. It just it, it just felt like someone someone else could do what I was doing. Yeah. And I had done it for too long. Especially when you were so over in NXT. It, well, and it... it it's weird because it's not like, so it's not like an ego thing. It's not like a, you know, oh, well, on main event, nobody appreciates me or on SmackDown or Raw or whatever, but NXT, I'm this superstar, whatever. It doesn't matter. It, it, I say it all the time. In the end, we sign on to a company yeah. and that company can do whatever they want with us. They can, sure. they can either use us or not use us. I'm the same performer either way. Mm. Um, so it, if you want to utilize me in NXT, Cool. If you want to use utilize me on main event, awesome. If you want to use utilize me, you know, as a dark match or, or raw or smackdown or whatever, awesome. Mm. I'm cool either way because that's what I'm signed up for, yep. and and I can't really you know bitch about that. That's that's this is what I'm doing. Sure. <laughs> Whose decision was it to cut your hair? Uh, that was mine. Okay. That was mine. Did you have to get this cleared with people. Kind of. Because all these action figures. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had, so I had long long hair. hair. Yeah. I had long hair before WWE and then I had long hair for like 10 years, I think up until whenever I cut it. And I just kind of, it was one of those things too. Like, like I said, I wasn't in a good place, man. Like I just look at myself and be like, what am I doing? Like I'm, I'm out of shape. I don't feel good. I don't look good. Like I just feel like I need to change and I need to see someone different in the mirror. Mm. And it was just like, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Like, boom, get rid of it and just switch everything up. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then how was, like, you obviously went to work the next time. Yeah. Were they like, what did you do? No, not at all. Oh. It was, it's not like, it's very weird because before it used to be like, you know, very touchy on like, well, you know, we got to clear this through a bunch of stuff and whatever. It's not really like that anymore. Like, it's a lot more relaxed and laid back and whatever. And so I just, I think I I, want to say I asked, I think I did ask. I was like, hey, I'm going to cut my hair. That doesn't sound like asking. Yeah. Well, and I think because it was also at that time when I was like, 
you know, I think I said something um, where I had, I had had a conversation with a couple people and it wasn't the best conversation. Like it was like I was very bitter and negative and everything else. And then it kind of came right after that of like, I'm going to cut my hair. And it was just like, I think it was almost like a, are you okay? Is uh, everything okay? Right. And I said, I'm perfectly fine. I just want to cut my hair. And they said, okay. And then I just did it, showed up and was like, all right. You mentioned that you've worked many jobs. Yeah. What's the most embarrassing one you've had? I don't know if any of them are embarrassing, but I've done a lot of things that you would never expect me to okay, do. Okay, let's hear it. So in my, in my progression, I'll give you my very first. So like when I was a when I was a kid, kid, I've always worked. I've always like I've always been I guess motivated to like do something. Right. So when I was a kid, it was started as like um, my dad used to do like uh, mud races. So like he had like a souped up kind of like car and stuff. And, okay. And, and they'd race in the mud. Yeah. So we used to go there all the time. Was, you know, which it, which town is this in? All over the place. Oh. So we'd go to like Nanaimo or wherever. Like yeah. you know what I mean? It was all over the place. You you show up you do your thing for the weekend and head back um so my dad he, he always raced stuff and whatever so we used to do this and i used to go and collect like beer cans and beer bottles and and whatever right load them up into a garbage bag and just fill up the truck as we go i'd show up back and like go to the store and like it'd be like hey you just made like 100 bucks because yeah. you collected all the stuff so i was like cool so i went from that to like i think once i got a little older i looked up to my sister and so i was like oh she babysits all the time i can babysit so then i babysat for a little bit but like <laughs> Obviously, I didn't overly enjoy that because imagine Tyler Breeze being your babysitter. Well, and you got to think when you're like, you know, I think I was like, I don't know, 13, 14 at that time. I'm not cool with kids, you know, like I'm not good with babies, <laughs> but you like money. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, I'm like, they're paying well, but like, I mean, this, this I, I'm not good with babies. I'm not there yet as a, as a man. So uh, I went from like collecting cans to being like a babysitter. Uh, I think right after that, I, I got a, uh, a job at the grocery store. Um, I got a job at a grocery store as being like, you know, produce and whatever. And then, uh, where'd I go? I went from there. This is, this is where I started jumping all over the place. Cause I was like 15 or 16. Um, so then I went from there to like a health food store. Then right before my prom, I ended up, I was playing baseball and I tore everything in my ankle. So oh. I couldn't walk. So, uh, I was supposed to start a new job building RVs. Wow. And I tried to do it for a week and I couldn't do it. I was standing with like this like air bubble cast and I was like, I can't like do anything. Basically the nicest way of them like firing me. So I lasted for like a week or two. I ended up going and being a night audit at a hotel where I could just sit there. I went to Blockbusters were still around at the time. <laughs> I went there, got a bunch of movies. I'd have a portable DVD player and I'd just watch movies and do some auditing stuff and then I just had to stay awake for the night. Um, I did that up until, because I was heading to wrestling school at that point. Yeah. I had to like make sure I was all good. By the time I graduated, uh, went to Calgary to be to join wrestling school. Yeah. I got a job immediately at a gas station, which in minus 40 in Calgary, uh, pumping people's gas, horrible, horrible. Yeah, that's while you were in wrestling school? Yes, I would, go to, I would, I would do that uh, in the daytime because wrestling school I think was like in the morning. So it'd be like three hours in the morning and then I'd go right to work and I'd work. Um, so I did that, I, I worked at a, so I worked at a gas station from there, my buddy got me a job at a health food store. So I, got, I went to a health food store. Then my buddy got me a job renovating houses. So I was with a guy and he basically would buy a house and we'd go in and we'd do everything. So like I learned how to do electrical, plumbing, everything, whatever. Wow. Then from there, I was already, I think I finished wrestling school. I started wrestling around. From there, I got a job. Uh, where did I go from here? I want to say what was first. So I knew someone from back at the gas station who, who just got a job because of her dad. I ended up joining CP Rail as a train conductor. What? Yes. So I was a train conductor. With what kind of experience? Uh, none. Oh, they, they okay, were just great. kind of doing a hiring spree at that time. Calgary was like hiring everything. So I I joined on to be a train conductor, which I started like you know you build the trains and you do the. the this sounds terribly unsafe. Crazy. It's, it's insane. So keep in mind, it's also like middle of winter. If the emergency brake goes out on a train that has 80 cars, you have to walk that by yourself because the engineer ain't getting out. It's an engineer and a conductor and that's it. Wow. So I'm out there in the middle of like snow, everything else with a flashlight and I'm hoping that there's no bears, there's no cougars, no nothing. And I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I doing? What am I doing? Sounds like a horror movie. But I'm, meanwhile, I'm like, I'm like 20 and I'm like making more money than I've ever made. I'm like, this is awesome. They end up laying me off. As they lay me off, I end up getting a job uh, at my ex-girlfriend my ex-girlfriend or my ex-father-in-law, I guess, he worked at a homeless shelter. So I ended up getting a job as the security at a homeless shelter. So, which crazy, by the way, watching people overdose and like kicking people out and then like mm. calling the cops and like trying to basically become a good like, you know, hey man, yeah, just stay cool. Everything's cool. And like cops are on the way because you ain't supposed to be here. You know what I mean? Like crazy stuff like that. I end up getting called back to CP Rail 
And then I did my tryout and then I did my second tryout. And on that second tryout, if I did not get hired, I was basically like, look, man, I'm going to be broke with maxed out credit cards because I maxed out all my credit cards, flying myself to Florida for two tryouts to get hired and everything else. Yeah. And I went, you know, I'm going to be working at CP Rail after this. Like, and so at CP Rail too, obviously I was a conductor. The tanning salon I was going to, the guy who owned it worked at CP Rail. He goes, hey man, you work at CP Rail? I said, yeah. He goes, you want to be a manager? And I said, I'm like 20. Can I be a manager? And he goes, yeah. I'll at the put, tanning salon? He, no, at the CP Rail. Oh my God. So I go, how is that possible? And he goes, I can put in a word for you. I said, okay. So I applied for the job. I got the job. I, all of a sudden, I'm a manager at a railroad <laughs> telling these 40 and 50 year old men how to like, what to do. I'm managing the cruise. I'm up in this tower and I'm going like, what is happening here? Like I'm wrestling over here. I'm managing a railroad over here. Wow. All over the place. And then from there, I ended up getting hired by WWE. CP Rail actually wouldn't let me go. I went on a leave of absence for like two or three years because they, they were like, oh, you don't have to quit. You don't have to leave. Like just... Oh, because it's a union, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're giving, like, all of a sudden I'd get, like, random bonuses and stuff. Like, because I was still employed by this them. This is amazing. I was like, it's nuts. It's crazy. So, like, I didn't officially want to quit there, but eventually I had to because I was like, I'm in WWE for, like, two or three years at this point. It sounds like when you're done with wrestling, you can just go slide back into your railroad I job. I could, but I never will. <laughs> never will. I'm in Florida for life, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I was back home recently, and I'm like, it's cold yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get enough on the road of like, you know, hey, one day over here, one day in New York, one day over here, garbage. I, I don't like I don't like my shoes being wet. I don't I don't want to be slushing around, you know what I mean? You weren't Tyler Breeze when you first went to FCW. I was not. I was uh my first name was Mike McGrath. Okay. Yeah. Like Sugar Ray? Yeah, exactly yeah. like Sugar Ray. <laughs> I was like, Well, I can't be Mark McGrath, but I could be Mike McGrath. So I was Mike McGrath for like two weeks and then some incident happened where all of a sudden Dr. Tom came out of the thing and he just went Hey, you're uh, Mike Dalton now. I said, okay. Which I got, uh, Dalton was another name I pitched because of Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. And then uh -huh. so I was, I was Mike Dalton right up until I turned to Tyler Breeze. And then did you develop Tyler Breeze? Yes. That was like a full necessity had to, had to happen. Um, or else you were going to like, well, I mean, that's, oh my God, that's how much time do we got here? That's a, <laughs> that's a whole conversation. Uh, basically, um, short version. I'd been in, in FCW for a couple of years. Yeah. Almost gotten fired several times uh, and then was kind of on my last straw of like, hey, come up with something or we don't need you. This is just like Ronnie's story. Kind of, yeah. Wow. And then luckily I had uh, Creed Woods who was like, look, man, if you're going out, like, let's give him everything you got. So we came up wow. with like four characters. We made videos for him and we pitched them all and one of them happened to be Tyler Breeze. Wow. Yeah. This is very similar to Ronnie's story where he was like, I'm on my way out. Yeah. Came up with the perfect 10. Yep. And it saved his career. Yes. So Tyler Breeze saved your career. That one time, yes. <laughs> the other times were ridiculous. What do you think is the most ridiculous line in your entrance theme? Oh, so funny funny story about that. They sent me, uh, so we were at NXT, and they send me, uh, somebody told me, like, hey, we need you to come in to do some voiceover stuff uh, tomorrow. I said, okay. They end up sending me an email, and it's a full song, like full lyrics. And I just went, am I singing this? And they said, yeah, you're singing this. And I went, I can't sing. Like, I can't do this. I thought it was going to be like a couple, like I'm coming to get you or whatever. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So they ended up sending me this full thing and it was not like, it was not what I wanted at all. Like I was like, Oh my God, this is gonna be so bad. And like, basically I can't remember the specifics of it, but it was a lot of like touch my body and this and this and this. And I, I just went, I don't know if that's like the Tyler Breeze character at all. <laughs> so I had to kind of navigate it where I was like, this, this band just sent me their lyrics and we're like, we're really excited about them. And I couldn't oh. just be like, look, man, this sucks. So I was like, hey, do you mind if I like, you know, put a couple of my signature things in? And they said, yeah, sure, go ahead. That'd be awesome. So I wrote a bunch of like exact same thing as they did, but I basically just rearranged and like wrote some of my stuff in there. So anything that's like, you know, beauty shot and whatever, whatever, it, that's kind of all my creation on there right so which and then of course i'm sick so i go in the next day and i'm singing these lyrics and they sound horrible and i'm sick and i'm like this is just ridiculous um but <laughs> i guess in terms of like what's the most ridiculous uh the whole thing is ridiculous really like do you, you ever listen to the lyrics i was on the way over here oh it's it's so it's so funny because you know Everybody, you know, I'm, you know, what I'm gonna go with the one that no matter what, if I go to a signing or if I'm in the somewhere where there's a lot of wrestling fans, there's always one guy who goes, 
look, everyone, it's Tyler. And I'm like, yep, there he is. You're in a, a very select few, though, that have sang their own entrance theme. V- yes, yes. Very few. Yeah. You're up there with Shawn Michaels. Uh-huh. I mean, Chris Jericho is currently singing his theme. Mm-hmm. That's different because mm-hmm. he's in a band. A little different, a little different. And everyone else is going to be like in the comments section going to be like, you forgot, you forgot about this person. This you one, forgot this, this one, person. this one, this one. That's honestly the only ones I can think of. The fact that we can only think of a few. Yeah. 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 Wow. I like it. I guess so. But it's very modeled after Zoolander, I would feel. The very first. So I know that Woods is, I know he has it. And he's slowly been releasing all the st- like old stuff we made. He's going to put out the very first Tyler Breeze pitch that I made. Oh, wow. And I promise you, it's Zoolander to a T. Well, I hope he puts it out soon after we I put this out. I Good. guarantee you will. I guarantee you Let him know. It's, it, it's, it's actually, it, it's, I loved it. So it, the funny part was we made these videos, right? And this one, we made it. And as we're doing it, I was like, I was like I've tried to be a wrestler so hard. Like, I've tried to, to just be like this wrestler. And I went, let's go the complete opposite. Like, <laughs> I want to be a total idiot who knows nothing about wrestling. And I ha- added the Zoolander to it. And we made it, and as we're doing it, we're both laughing our heads off. Like as soon as he, <laughs> as soon as he stops recording, we're laughing our heads off. And I went, "Oh my god!" Like, and we we both look at each other and we go, "This one's too. This one's like we're enjoying it too much. There's no way this ever happens." Yeah. And that was the only one they liked. When did you start to feel that the audience was on this ride with you? Um, I think when I got comfortable. So like, I kind of did it for a while before we did it on TV, and I was like, uh, "I don't like. I don't know how to really be with this because like." I want to wrestle, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying so hard to like, just cause I know this stuff doesn't mean I have to do it. Yeah. So I did everything but wrestle. And then I was like, okay, like cool. So like my first couple times it was like, I barely did anything. And then after that it was like, okay, well you got to add some stuff in there. So like we started kind of doing it and I want to say almost instantly I did it maybe like two or three times. And then I started doing the stuff with CJ Parker Yeah. and like it was kind of, yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like funny. And then they, I was like, people are kind of digging like this idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so all of a sudden I kind of like, it was very odd. Everything just kind of clicked and I went, yeah, there's going to be something to this, I think. And then you just kept getting more and more ridiculous with yes, it. Yes, yes. I got more and more comfortable with it to where, and this is kind of the perfect contrast of like Mike Dalton, for example. I think I did one promo as Mike Dalton. Don't ever put a microphone in front of Mike Dalton's face because it's, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm giving 110%. I'm so nervous right now. Meanwhile, <laughs> I got to a point now where like I could do the interview with you or I could go to a red carpet and interview people or I could do whatever. And if you put a microphone in front of my face, I'm almost more comfortable than I am wrestling now. Wow. And so it's just like, cool, man. And that was just becoming Tyler Breeze. It's just, you stop thinking about it. You stop. Somebody told me, they said, you have to stop caring so much. And I said, I don't know what that means. Cause like I've all, I've wanted to do this since I was six years old. Like, how do you not care about it? Yeah. And once you finally get to that point, you go, Oh my God, this is so much easier. Like mm. just stop. Just relax a little bit. Relax. Let some stuff go and just chill and have fun. Yeah. Once you have fun, you go, man, you could do anything in here. Like, we're invincible in there. I yeah. could do anything. Yeah. It's awesome. What was the match in NXT when you were like, oh, they're starting to take this seriously too? Uh, probably the Sami Zayn one, the takeover one. Yeah. As soon as I did that, that was like, okay, cool. Like, I just hung for like 15 minutes or whatever. Yeah. I'm not just like a gimmick. Like, there's like, there's substance here. And I think I even got pulled aside and told that. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, it is a great gimmick. But the fact that you can actually work. Yeah. It makes a difference when you have both sides to it. Yeah. So when you were growing up, who were the wrestlers you idolized? I was always like, you know, I was was almost the perfect fan. Where like, obviously Canada, I was like, Bret Hart, Bret Hart, Bret Hart. Um, So I hated Stone Cold Steve Austin. But then as Stone Cold Steve Austin became like awesome, then I loved Stone Cold Steve Austin. (laughs) Love. So if you wanted to be a wrestler when you were six, what was the backup plan? So I had this argument, which it wasn't so much an argument, but it was... Other than CP Rail, I I guess. I was very... Oh my God. (laughs) I was very adamant that I did not have a backup plan because like my my parents would go like, oh, you should take some business classes or whatever. And I said, like, I don't even want to finish my current schooling because like I want to be a wrestler and I want to go to wrestling school and that's it. And I know that if I put any sort of effort into a backup plan, mm. then I'm just going to go, nah, I could just do this backup plan. Like, yeah. no, I don't want a backup plan because there's no other alternative. I'm going to wrestling school and then I'm going to make it to WWE and then I'm going to be a wrestler and that's what I'm going to do. And like, you have no idea, like teachers tried to like discourage me and like, hey, look, like NHL, for example, thousand people try out, hundred people get to this tryout, 50 people to this tryout, two people make it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, so I should just like give up. 
And I was like, no, guess yeah. what? Other people have made it. Yeah, you can be one of those yes. two people. Less talented people with less drive or, or, or not as smart as me or whatever have have done this and been perfectly fine. And that goes with anything. Yeah. Less <clears throat> less driven, less talented, less hardworking, whatever. People have done things just strictly because they want to. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? It's possible to fail at something that I don't want to do. Why don't I give everything I have to what I want to do? Yeah. And then if I need a backup plan, I'll get there if I need to. But until then... I have no backup plan. That's such great life advice there. Right. Because if you do have a backup plan, even if you're putting 1% mm -hmm. of effort into your backup plan, yep. you're not giving 100% Put now. all your energy into what you want to do. Make mm -hmm. it happen. So what was the moment when you, you, know, you said you were at a low point? What changed it? Was it you going back to NXT or did something personally change for you? There was a lot of stuff. There was uh, just in general, I was not a happy person. Um, I, was, I had a very, very bad mindset on things um, where you just kind of either get entitled or, or you're just... You're just not in a good place. Um, like I had to, I don't know. I mean, at that point, I mean, not to, you know, get depressing and whatever, but my marriage was kind of falling apart and, and uh, work wasn't going well. And like, I just, I, 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 at that point I started thinking about like, my family's all back in Canada. Mm -hmm. I only see my family maybe once a year, yeah. if that. Yeah. So I'm like, I, like I'm missing, I've missed 10 years of like, I have two nephews that I've barely met. You know what I mean? And like my parents and like my sister and like, Everything. I, it's just there's so much culmination of things that I was like, I need to make a gigantic life change, and it has to start right now. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like, what am I doing? You know, hmm. what I mean? I'm wasting time. And look at where you are at now. Yes. Yes. A successful business owner. Yes. A successful professional wrestler. Yep. yep. I imagine though that you have a lot of people that walk through these doors. Actually, everyone that walks through these doors is probably going, you know what, Matt? I'm going to give a hundred percent. I'm all in. Mm -hmm. At what point do you think people start to question if they're all in on this? Uh, probably on like day one or two. Um, <laughs> because the thing is, and we even had a guy. We had a guy who he just, he'd always want to be a wrestler. Uh, I think he was like 35, but he was like, he's like, I just want to try it. I just want to see what it's like. And as we're teaching the basic of basic of basics, he just went, whoa, this is a lot harder than I thought. Like this is a lot harder than like I see on TV. Like I figured I'd kind of like pick it up a little yeah. bit. It's like, no, man. Like, What's the very basics? Front rolls? Uh, so rolls and bumps, stuff like that. But what we were teaching was like a little bit of chain wrestling. So like exchange some oh, arm yeah, stuff, yeah. do some hammerlock stuff. Basically, the, the whole thing was just footwork. And like they don't realize that getting your footwork properly to where you don't have to think about it yeah. takes a lot of reps and a yeah. lot of stuff. Like it's a lot of thinking of like, hey, when you put a headlock on, put your feet right. And it was like over and over and over and over and over to fix your feet, fix your feet, fix your feet, fix your feet, fix your feet. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's yeah. like, people just don't realize it until you try it. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay. And then if you last through that stuff, then all of a sudden now you're getting knocked down and having to get up over and over and over. And you get the nice welt on your oh, yeah. uh, back from running, running the, ropes. the ropes and yeah. everything. And even just like having to get up and do it again and come in the next day and do it again and do it again and do it again. Yeah. Like it, that it, it tests you the entire time. So how did the move happen for you to now be on 205? Um, that was kind of another scenario where Dango got hurt and I just kind of went like, eh, I think that maybe I didn't, he got hurt and then I, I wasn't really used for like three or four weeks and I went, Hey, if you guys want me on two five, I'll do two five. And they immediately was like, how about this Friday? And I said, yep, I'm in. Look at you being a company guy. Got to do it. Yeah. I'm here. Like, why not? You know what I mean? But I, I love the fact that this all boils down to you love wrestling. I love wrestling. Yeah. Love wrestling. The whole point of, you know, training people to do it properly. And like I said, it's so fulfilling to watch somebody try to get something. We had, we, had a, we had a trainee. She's actually here today. Her name's Taylor. And she had one bad day where she just couldn't get something. And like over and over and over and over, and I could see her. And she was just beating herself up in her head. And I looked at Ronnie and I went, I went, she's going to go home and she's going to come back and she's going to nail it and she's never going to do this ever again. And she comes back the next day, first try, does it. And I went, I said, you ate yourself up like alive <laughs> yesterday, didn't you? And she goes, yeah. And I, and I said, I can see it. Like I can see it in you. And once she gets it, then I'm like, she's going to be good. Mm. It's very fulfilling. Very fulfilling well, watching that happen. As we wrap things up here, what's the one match that when, if someone hasn't watched any of your stuff that you're super proud of and you say, you got to watch me in this match. Someone actually just tweeted me this. They'd never watched wrestling before. And they said, oh, I should probably start like trying to figure out what wrestling is, I guess. Or NXT. Someone told them about NXT. Yeah. The very first match they watched, which is exactly what I would say to do, was the Fatal 4-Way that I had oh, wow. uh, with with me, uh, Neville, Zane, TJ. Um, that was like the culmination of four dudes who put this thing together and it came off exactly how we wanted it at exactly the right time and the crowd was so into it. 
it was literally probably the closest thing to a perfect match I've ever had. Wow. That if you watch that and you don't become a fan of one one of the guys in there or everybody or wrestling in general, yeah. because it's so contagious when everybody's jumping to their feet and like all these little like things along the way, then I then you're not gonna like wrestling. If if you don't get into that <laughs> match, you're not gonna like it. It's just how it is. How can people find out more about flatbacks? Uh, so we're on social, um, which. Uh, no, Ronnie's in charge of our social. It's like Flatbacks Training or something on Instagram. Well, you'll see. But we have a website, flatbackswrestlingschool.com. And you're in Apopka, Florida. Yes. Which is just, just outside, outside Orlando. Right. Um, but yeah, Flatbacks Wrestling School. We got all the info on there, which it also has our social stuff on there. Um, I can't believe I don't know it. But he, he made it all weird. It's like <laughs> Flatbacks T on Twitter or something. And then I think it's Flatbacks... Flatbacks Training? Training on think, Instagram. Yes, because I, I just tagged you guys yes, in something. Yes, And if, if not, you can always see it. It's attached to like mine is, is mm, gorgeous with three M's and all that other stuff. Uh, yeah, we got a lot on there. So And I, you know, I, I met all your students in here yeah. and there's some accents. You've had some people like fly in. Currently, we have here. somebody from England somebody from italy so we're going international wow international and it's six week classes three times eight week. sorry eight week classes four times four times a year uh okay wait no no no. we have five <laughs> classes total five classes total oh, well good thing you're doing the yeah, talking here yeah and not so we me. got so we got five classes total for the year uh i think we do like eight weeks take a week off eight weeks take a week off somewhere in there but we do five classes for the year uh, all that info is on the website. Obviously. And I'll link it below. So I'll put yeah, it in yeah, the yeah. pinned comments so you guys can find out. I know that 100% that it's <laughs> flatbackswrestlingschool.com. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of people that are watching this that are sitting on the fence going, man, I've always wanted to train. Yeah. But I don't know where to go. Exactly. So, and we just had somebody say this too, where a lot of people go like, ah, if only I lived in Florida, I'd come train with you. Guess what? It's going away to university. Yes. Like go away for eight weeks. Like I said, we got someone here from Italy, someone here from England. You come here for eight weeks. And you're telling me that you you don't have eight weeks in you to start what you want to do for a career, then you aren't going to make it anyway. And you know after I mean? those eight weeks, do you think that your students could work matches? 100%. They're about to start working matches now. Wow. And we're halfway through. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna take a bump today. There you go. I bump. It's been a while. I actually went to wrestling school in Toronto. That's what Ronnie was saying, yeah. Yeah, but that was a long time ago. I, then I decided in my summer that I would go back to my communications degree mm -hmm. at Wilfrid Laurier University. Nice. Where I graduated. Wilfrid Laurier. Yeah. He's on what, the five, 10? Five. He's on the five. What? The, the highway? No. What? Five, oh, five the, bill, oh $10 Wilfrid $10. Laurier. Yes, he's on the $5 bill I, I in Canada. It. I knew he's on the five. He's Canada's first French-speaking prime minister. I didn't know that, but I knew yeah. he was on the five. Yes, and when you go to Canada, or our Canadian friends who are watching and listening mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. He's on the blue money. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I decided I would continue my communications degree and stop the wrestling training. See? And now I just hold a microphone. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's but good. you've turned it into <clears throat> an, an, an empire here. That's very generous. I would you? call it empire. Um, that's very generous. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for this conversation. Of course. And I'm so happy to see uh, where you're at with everything. Yeah. Especially hearing that you, you know, you turn things around mentally. Yeah. And that's a big lesson to be learned for anybody that's watching and listening to this right now. Well, if you're sitting there waiting for somebody to do it for you, I promise you it's not going to happen. You got to do it yourself. Thank you so much. All right. Well, thank you for checking out the chat with Tyler Breeze. If you don't already, please, uh, boom, right there. Click subscribe. Look at... Look at these great photos of Tyler Breeze that are hanging on the walls here. And how about this? Very nice. The next interview coming up is with... Oh, this guy right here. It's going to get a lot more wow. charismatic, a lot more pretty. I'm the new Prince Pretty. Wow. Enough, enough of this guy. Oh, yeah. Look at Let's this. Let's zoom in on that. Look at this. What a physique. Upper body business, my ass. <laughs> and it's going to be a lot more of this guy. Different version. Different yeah, the, the, the interview will still be perfect. Yeah, I'll take that. It'll just be, it's a different version of, can we, I think we should show that picture over there. Which one? The yeah. weirdo picture? <laughs> well, now that you've brought it up. I mean, me it's hanging on the wall. You must be at least yeah, somewhat proud of it. Yeah, I'm going to chop in a few minutes. So you might as well show them that weird picture. Enjoy this, guys. <sighs> it's still better than Breeze's. Yeah, there it's. Uh, How about that haircut? You should bring that haircut back. Eat shit. <laughs> This one's better. Jack. That's better. Yeah, Jack. and then there he is. Boom. Yeah. All right, so in a few days, that's coming up. And then, whew, you guys know that I trained a little bit. Yep. So, uh, and you're on location at Flatbacks Wrestling School. That's, yes. So, so uh, only one thing left to do, pal. Take some flatbacks and chops. So that'll be the, uh, the next video after this one.